So this is the first in a series of lessons on circle theorems and in this first video we are going to be focusing on radii and chords. Before we actually do any circle theorem questions we need to be able to recognise different parts to a circle. So in this next section there are eight different properties and you need to be able to recognise them all. So in this first diagram we are shown the circumference and the circumference is the length around the entire circle or the perimeter. In the second diagram we have a line that is going from the center of the circle to the circumference and that is called the radius. Now if I continue that radius and continue it all the way to the other side as well I would have what's called diameter. This line has to be crossing through the center. The fourth diagram is showing a line that is going through one part of the circumference to the other and that is called a chord and that does not go through the centre. The next part is called a tangent. The tangent is basically a line that touches the circle on the outside but only once. The next diagram is an arc. The arc is shown in red and that's part of the circumference. The next part is a sector, it's a slice of the circle, so it's part of the area of a circle. And finally a segment is the shaded area between a chord and the circumference. So let's have a quick reminder, because this particular triangle will come up in these sorts of questions when we're dealing with radii and chords. So those little arcs, those little lines, show that those two sides are the same. So this particular triangle is called an isosceles triangle. There are two basic properties to an isosceles triangle. The first one, shown by the arcs, are that there are two equal sides. And the second one is that it has two equal angles. And they are below the arcs, and it has to be the base angles. So you will be using these when dealing with circle theorems that include radii and chords. So let's apply that to this example. So a triangle formed by two radii is an isosceles triangle and that's shown here. So I've got the centre which is X and I've got my radii which are equal in size. So that means that must be an isosceles, we have two equal sides and therefore two base angles that are equal. So applying that to an exam question. O is the centre of the circle. It's really important that the exam question tells you that. If it doesn't go through the centre, some of these rules no longer apply, so you need to be careful. Find the value of x and give reasons for each stage. So we have a chord, AB, and we have our radii, AO and OB. So I can put my little arcs in there to show that AO and OB are the same. And I've now created an isosceles triangle. So that means that OAB, the angle OAB, is also 42, because that's a base angle like the one on ABO. So I'm gonna write that down because the question says give reasons for each stage, and I don't wanna forget these reasons. So angle OAB is 42, and the reason is that base angles in an isosceles triangle are equal. Now one other property of a triangle you need to remember is that angles add up to 180 degrees. So if I add 42 and 42 together, I get 84, and then take it away from 180 to get 96. So X is 96, but again I want to give reasons for each stage, so the reason I did that was because angles in a triangle add up to 180 degrees. Let's look at rule 2. So this looks more complicated than it is. The perpendicular from the centre to a chord bisects the chord. So perpendicular means creates a right angle, bisect means cuts in half. So I've got a, O to A and O to B, which are my radii, and I've got my chord A to B, and I've also got a line OM that is cutting AB in half, it's bisecting the chord. So if it's bisecting it, it's creating a perpendicular, so it's creating a 90 degree angle. So OMB is 90 degrees, so I can do a little 
symbol there, but also O-M-A. The other part to this shape that we can see is that we have two radii. So O to A and O to B are the same. So I can put my little arc symbols into there. And finally, if M is cutting AB in half, A to M has to be the same as M to B. So I'm also going to do some arcs there. Note that I've got a double arc there, and the reason I've done that is so that you know that A to M and M to B match, and then A to O and O to B match. So don't do single arcs for all of them, otherwise you're saying they're all the same, which they're not. So a few points from this. O to A and O to B are the same because they're radii. A to M and M to B are the same because M is the midpoint. Angle OMA is 90 degrees and angle OMB is 90. Now one thing you will have to use sometimes with these questions is how to apply Pythagoras' theorem. And if you have forgotten this, I will put a link in the description on this video and you can click that to revise using the Pythagoras theorem. So let's apply this rule to this exam question. So O is the center. I've got my radii, which is OA and OB, so I can put in 15 centimeters straight away. I've also been told in the question, M is the midpoint, and A to B is 14 centimeters. So half of that is seven. So I now know that A to M is seven, and M to B is seven. So I've labeled it as much as I can. It says work out the length of O to M. Now, I'm gonna take that triangle out of the question because I know OMB, the angle, is 90 degrees. So if I take out all the information, the 15 centimeters and the seven, I'm looking for that perpendicular height. It's just Pythagoras. So label the three sides, make sure the hypotenuse is C, apply the subtraction Pythagoras theorem, and substitute your values into this theorem. Work out 15 squared minus seven squared on your calculator. So I get B squared equals 176. So to find B, I just need to square root 176. Now the question didn't say to give reasons, so this is good enough, but if it did, for each stage you would need to explain why. So O to A is a radii, um, etc. And that's it.